right, so this was a, one of the ones, you know, producers that you had highlighted, and I'm really excited to show this to you. So this is um, this is Domaine Guillebrou. So, uh, this is, uh, to me, uh, we're talking the Macon. So mm -hmm. this is Macon Cruzil that uh, uh, you know, you're probably 45 or so minutes north of, say, like Viray, like most people's maybe, you know, kind of the center of the Macon. Nice. And uh, this is, to me, one of the most important producers uh, from a bit of cultural standpoint in all of Burgundy. Uh, the grandparents started farming here in the 50s and alleged that this is really uh, might be one of the very first organic farmed uh, producers in Burgundy. Oh, interesting. Going back to the 50s. Okay. So the domain itself started in 78, uh -huh. but the grandparents started before that. Right. And so this is uh, Les Genevrières. Nice. So many people may know Les Genevrières, Juniper Berries from Merceau. Merceau. It's, a, <laughs> it's a Premier Cru Merceau right. site. But this is, uh, uh, I find, you know, when you're talking Macon, say, compared to Cote de Bone Whites, yeah. the wines tend to be broader, tend to be a little more honeyed, a little richer. What I love about their wines yes. is they are very, very, very minerally mm. by Macon standards. I think you could put some of their wines in a lineup with, you know, wines from, you know, say, uh, the Cote de Bone, where the, the people would not say, oh, that's the Macon. You know, they have really pronounced minerality. Uh, the father mm -hmm. uh, passed, uh, oh goodness, I think uh, about 15 years ago. His two sons kind of uh, uh, run the domain. Yeah, yeah. They have about 17 hectares. They make a little red wine, a little white wine. They make one great uh, Pinot Noir that comes from rootstock from Pomard. Uh -huh. The father, before he started the domain, made wine in uh, in Beaujolais, in yes. Bruy, uh -huh. and in Merceau. So he really, uh, besides uh -huh. the uh, Pinot Noir, they make La Miot. They also make a red Macon that is from Gamay that, uh, based on the canopy structure, very, very low yields. All their vineyard sites mm -hmm. are very high density. Okay. So they're really trying to coax flavor out of the soils. They're farming, you know, the right way. Um, it's uh, and there's no new wood on this at all. Wow. So this is uh, you know the wines go through primary and mellow for uh, mellow secondary fermentation in oak in uh, uh, but elevage is completely a neutral wood. Nice, that's awesome. Does he produce a good num like case production of these wines or? These are if they're making. Oh. And I'm gonna ballpark this. If they're making somewhere, maybe on a domain level eight to ten wines. Mm -hmm. I don't think any of them are over a thousand cases. Uh, this is a very small domain, but very respected domain. Uh, I suggest you go look at their website. It's yeah. fabulous. Every wine that they profile, uh, they have a different great restaurant. Most of them in France, but some of them Michelin star restaurants in other parts of the world. And they'll have, this is what the chef would make with this wine. Oh, that's so and cool. then they'll have the yeah. wine directors comment why he paired it with this dish. That's amazing. It's, it's really one of the best uh, winery websites I've seen anywhere in the world of wine. Okay. I really hold them in such high regard. It's a relatively new producer for Martins. As yeah. I say, the domain goes back to 78, but we've only represented them for maybe about 90 days. So it's a brand new acquisition for Have us. Have they been represented in the U.S. in the past? I don't know that history. Okay. I can speak to it. It's interesting though, because I do sell a ton of Burgundy, and mostly right. we do focus on um, Cote de Nuit, Cote de Beau, and mm -hmm. of course Chablis. So Mecon is kind of like a, like a little ugly, Redheaded so, yeah, I'm with you. I, I don't think it has the sexiness of the Cote d'Or mm. or Chablis, but to me, this is one of the great producers, not just for Macon, but for all of Burgundy. And and, and when you taste the wine, I think you'll see there's just mm. there's such lovely minerality, mm. there's such tension, there's such lift. You know, it's not a wine that tastes over vinified. Oh, this, wow! This is really superb. Yep. White yep. burgundy. No, I, I love it. I think yeah, the how focused and sharp the acidity is on the palate in this wine is is, is beautiful. Yeah. I think for most people who's like working in the restaurant industry or been to some, we are all acid head <laughs> in yeah. the best way. We all want our wine to like yep. sear out like cause cause we know most of the wine that one can last wherever and two pairs better with you know, richer food. Yep. Um, there's to me there's almost a merceau like quality correct. to the nose. There's that, that kind of almost that it's almost like a nuttiness. Yes, yes. And yes. and you know uh, Almost like nutshell. Right. Like if, right. You, if you crack a walnut and you like, and then you rub your hands, it, there's almost that. That's kind of the beauty of Burgundy, I think, too, compared to California Chardonnay, where our Chardonnay just comes out vanilla. Whereas in the white Burgundy, they always come out nutty, even though you're like, okay, yep. they're both aging French oak, but why is it ours taste just like 
no offense, like massive producer cheap vanilla. So I was like, okay, no offense to any producers here. But the burgundy just naturally have that more of the nuttier taste to it. Um, I love this wine. What does this retail for? It retails probably right around 50. That's that's yeah. that's that's amazing value yeah. because it just it saw it reminded you of Merceau, but it reminded me of Polini Montreche. I actually thought it was more elegant. Yeah. Because Merceau is usually bigger and fatter. Fatter, yeah. To me, I thought this was pretty elegant. Yeah. Like a ton of mineral on the nose and on the palate. For yeah. sure. Like yeah. you're getting that chalkiness. I, I think you could take your Chablis customers mm -hmm. or some of your Cote d'Or white customers to this wine. Uh, you know, really share the narrative mm -hmm. that informs, you know, the integrity of the domain. Yeah. And they'd be like, wow, I've yeah. never tasted Macon like that. Yeah, I, seriously, I on, I think in a blind tasting, I will probably put this personally on like a Polini Montreche Village level yep. on the brighter year because acid is so good. And then, like I said, there's a chalky minerality that reminisce of Chablis almost. Yep. But then you're like, but it's not quite seashelly and it's not quite yep. that lean to be a Chablis. So my palate right. will be confused yep. a little bit. And I, But it is well made, so I'll probably put it in Polini Montreche. And, I, I see, I see and, your thought process. Yeah, it definitely doesn't have like that it. kind of Kimmeridgean kind of soil quality. I this is it. a yeah. limestone, clay yeah. limestone site. This was planted in 83, so the oh, vines, nice. are, vines are pretty old Beautiful. here. Mm -hmm. And uh, east facing, but I love that one.